Fan of me. You are the beginning and the end. Nobody like you, Jesus. I call you Jesus. Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. The awesome God. You are Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Every time I wake up in the morning, I shout, Jesus. You are Jesus, 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 Jesus. The great I am provides for me. The great I am provides for me. God has done it for you, turn those hands together. Hallelujah. We are going to South Africa. So, so there's a little thing. When I, when I say, when I say, hey, ta, you say, ta. Hey, ta. Are you ready? We are mass in our chest. Can we go to South Africa, everybody? We are mass. We are mass in our chest. We are mass in our chest.
with every breath that I am able. Oh, I will say. Oh, I will say. Of the goodness of God. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Everybody. For your mercy never fails me. All my days, I've been held in your hand. From the moment, from the moment that I wake up, hey, until I lay. to hear you all my life. All my life the one that woke you up this morning. With every breath, with every breath. we give you praise tonight. Somebody raise your voice and give God praise tonight. You have life. He woke you up this morning. He set you up on your way. Raise the voice. Raise the voice. You drove this morning. Worthy of my praise, oh my God. You are worthy of my My God.
you do cause you never fail you never fail you never change you were faithful to the end faithful God I worship you I worship you Too faithful to fail me. You're too faithful to fail me. You're too faithful to disappoint me. Oh, you're proving yourself. In my life. And I've come to read. to lift it up. Lord, you are the Lord. My God. Hey. You are the Lord. If God has been good to you, lift it higher than your neighbor. 
Lord, you are so good. You want to lift your voice as a sayer.
tribe of Judah, the king of glory, the soon coming king. He's the one who made all things and there was nothing that was made that he did not make. In him was the light and he was the light that was the light of men. He's the light that shines in darkness and the darkness does not comprehend him. He's the one who came to his own and his own did not recognize him. Lift your voice and bless him who is cloaked in light like a garment. Lift your voice and bless the one who hears and answers prayers. Lift your voice this evening and let him hear you from high heaven. That is the one who is cloaked in light like a garment. He sits at the right hand of the Father in glory. He spoke the word and it was done. There's nothing that he cannot do. Everything that he says comes to pass. He's the only wise God. The King of glory is his name. Bless him, bless him, bless him this evening. Lift your voice. Let God hear you. Let him know that you are here on behalf of your family. Let him know that you represent every time that a child cries. The mother knows his voice. How much more the almighty God will recognize your voice. Lift your voice this evening and give him thanks and praise. Lift your voice today. For it is in Jesus' mighty name that we have worship. And let the saints of God say loud and better, Amen. Oh, say Bible believing amen tonight. Shout that amen three times. Let heaven hear you. Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen means so be it. And so shall it be for you tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. It is what you ask that you get. It is what you seek that you find. It is the door that you knock that will be open to you. Help me turn to your neighbor and tell him this evening, your prayers will be answered. Turn to the other person and tell them, God is here tonight. Hallelujah. Take your seat. Take your seat. I hope you came with your expectation because I am here fully expecting that God will do a marvelous thing. Before we go on a few, a few uh, house. gathering like this, there are more people online than there are people in the house. And so, pull out your phones and send something to your social media. Put it on your Facebook, on your YouTube, on your Instagram, on your Snapchat, on every form of social media, R-C-C-G-N-A-O, and put it there, join us. The Bible says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation to them that believe. Good news needs effort. Bad news will always travel. People will, they hear it on CNN every news. But good news needs ambassadors. Go ahead and let the world know that you are here again tonight. That on a Friday night that people are out drinking, us Jesus freaks, we are here. Let me hear a Jesus freak say amen. There you go, there you go. Now, the restrooms, when you go out, the restrooms are over on my left. That is your right-hand side as you sit down looking at me. So, if you're looking for the restrooms, they will be over on your left as we go out. And then the prayer team, those that are praying with us, they're going to be in the super suite also on the left-hand side as you head towards the bathroom, towards the bathrooms behind the stage. Now, if there's a Mrs. Mustafa here from New Jersey, you should please make our way around the back and see us on the stage. Amen.
I hope you brought your expectations. And for those who are online, I want you to encourage all of us who are inside here. And just go ahead and let us know where you are worshipping from. Because there's nobody who's watching tonight. We are all worshipping together. So go online and type in there where you're from. Put your name, greetings, and let us know. You are from New Jersey. You are from Canada. You are from Chicago. You are from New... Anywhere that you are, let us know where you are from this evening. And encourage every one of us that we can go in there. Do I hear amen? And uh, as we go on this evening, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to have a word in due season from the leader of the young adults and youth ministry in the Americas. He's going to bring us a first word. Please make welcome with me tonight, Pastor Omotosho. I know you can put your hands together better than that. If you're excited, Dallas, to be in this place tonight, I want you to jump up and shout hallelujah. If you believe that the light of God has come to Dallas tonight, let your hallelujah be louder than that of your neighbor. Amen. I want to say a big thank you to our fathers and our mothers in the Lord. Mommy, we thank you. The Lord will bless you, ma, mightily in Jesus' name. Amen. I think it would be a good thing if we light up the auditorium now as the word of God is going to be coming forth so that we can all see our faces, our wonderful faces, and see the word of God together in Jesus' name. I have more than a song today. I bring myself, I am the sacrifice, I have more than a song today, I bring myself, I am your worship, receive this living sign. Your worship, accept this living sacrifice. I am your worship, receive this living sacrifice. into your hands we commit our entire life our entire being we know your hands are mighty as we come into your hands tonight we know deliverance will follow healings will follow salvation will follow victory will follow in the name of Jesus Lord open the heavens and let your light break forth in this auditorium in the name of Jesus let your hand save. Let your hand deliver. Thank you, blessed Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. If you believe this is your night, let your amen be louder. My work tonight is not too difficult. All I need to do is to just announce to Dallas, thy light has come. I don't know who God is speaking to tonight, but he says in Isaiah 60 in verse 1, he said, Arise and shine, for thy light is come. And I believe there is somebody hearing me, that no matter the darkness that has covered everywhere, your light will locate you in the name of Jesus. In the book of Genesis, when you read in chapter 1, the Bible tells us between verse 3 and verse 5, 
that God said, let there be light, and there was light. The Bible makes us to understand in verse 5 that the evening and the morning were the first day. So there was a light that God commanded on the first day. But the Bible tells us also that on the fourth day of creation, there was another set of lights that God created. In Genesis chapter 1, when you read between verse 14 and verse 19, God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. Let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And then in verse 19, the Bible says, the evening and the morning were the fourth day. So lights were created on the first day and lights were created on the fourth day. The question we have tonight is which of the light has come into, the, into Dallas tonight? I have good news for somebody. The light of the fourth day was to give illumination, to determine seasons, to determine times. But the light of the first day was to bring order to life. And I believe there is somebody hearing me that the light of the first day will shine in your life in the name of Jesus. What is this light that we are welcoming tonight? The Bible says in 1 John chapter 1, when you read in verse 5, he said, God is light and in him is no darkness at all. In the book of Psalm, in Psalm 27, when you read in verse 1, the Bible said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I make bold to tell you that the light of the first day is Jesus himself. And so when we are saying, let there be light, what we are simply saying, let light come into my life. Let light come into my finances. Let light come into my business. Let light come into my health. Let light come into my family. And I'm saying to somebody's life tonight, let there be light. The question tonight is, will you welcome light into your life? I'm talking about the light of Jesus. And I am here to announce that light has come. Just like John the Baptist was sent ahead to announce the coming of our Lord Jesus. The Bible says in John chapter 1, when you read in verse 9, he said John himself was not the light. He was simply a witness to tell about the light. But the Bible makes us to understand. John said so much about the light. But the Bible says when that light came, men rejected the light. In verse 10 of that John chapter 1, he said he came unto every world. He came into the very world he created, but the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own people and even they rejected him. The question before us tonight is why did they reject the light when light came into their life? When light came to take away their darkness. Bible says in John chapter 3, when you read between verse 19 and 20, he said, because the deeds of men are evil, they rejected light. I pray tonight that whatsoever is in your hand, that will make you to reject goodness in your life. If you will drop that thing in your hand and you will welcome goodness. You will welcome light. You will welcome health. You will welcome life in the name of Jesus. Why am I saying you will welcome these things? Bible make us to understand when you read in John chapter 1 in verse 4. He says, and the word was made flesh and it dwelt, uh, verse 14 rather. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the holy begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. What was the word that became flesh? Bible says in verse 4 of that scripture, he said, in that word was life. And the life was the light of man. I pray tonight that the word that became flesh, which we all know as Jesus, that same word is going to bring life to you today. You will not hold something in your hand, which is called evil, to reject goodness in your life. I pray that your healing will come. Your deliverance will come. Your victory will come. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe and you agree, say it better. Amen. So when God is bringing light to a community, all God does today is to send his word. 
The Bible makes us to understand in Psalm 119, in verse 130, he said, the entrance of the word gives light and it gives understanding to the simple. I told you I'm only here like John the Baptist to just announce that the light has come. I want you to know that the word that will bring light is still coming. When our Father and the Lord is bringing that word, light will illuminate your life. Light will illuminate your path. In that Psalm 119, the Bible says in verse 105, he said, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I pray tonight by the mercy of God that as the word of God will be coming forth tonight, it will bring light to you. It will give you direction. It will give you focus in the name of Jesus. By the mercy of God, receive that light. I say by the mercy of God, receive that light. Unfortunately, men reject light. Despite all the goodness that light is bringing. Why? Because the devil blocks the minds of men. He blocks the minds of men so that they cannot be able to receive the word. He blocks the minds of men so that the word that is carrying light cannot illuminate them. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, in verse 3 and verse 4, he said, But if our gospel is hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, shall shine unto them. I have good news for somebody. Every veil that has been put upon your mind, every veil that has been put upon your heart, everything the devil has put there to block your mind so that the light of his word will not illuminate you. We tear that veil in the name of Jesus. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, the Bible says in verse 14 and verse 15, he said, but their minds we are blinded for until this day remained the same veil on taking away in the reading of the Old Testament. He said, which veil is done away in Christ? People of God, the only place where that veil can be removed, where that blockage can be taken away, is only when you turn to Christ, when you turn to Jesus. Tonight when the altar call is made, don't allow anything to stop you from turning to Jesus. Don't allow anything to hinder you from saying, I surrender to the Most High. I believe God with somebody today. The veil on your mind will be taken away in the name of Jesus. Why does the devil block the minds of men? He blocks the minds of men so that they will not yield their lives into the hands of God. The one who wants to save them. The one who wants to deliver them. The one who wants to empower them. I pray tonight by the mercy of God that the hand of the Most High will rescue you from that situation. We rescue you from that challenge. We rescue you from oppression. Whatsoever is blocking your mind, not allowing you to yield into the hands of the Most High. We take it away today in the name of Jesus. I will give you an example. The Bible tells us when you read in the book of John in chapter 10, in verse 27 to 29, he said, my sheep, they hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any pluck them out of my hand. He said, my father who gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. When you yield yourself into the hand of the most high, you are simply putting yourself in what I call divine assurance. Nothing can pluck you out of the hand of the Father. Nothing can take you out of his hand. By the mercy of the living God, as you yield to the Most High tonight, nothing will take you out of the hands of the living God. In the name of Jesus. How do we deal with this problem of the mind? The problem that is blocking the minds of men. It will not allow men to, uh, to receive the light of his word. It will not allow men to yield into the hands of God. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1, when you read in verse 18, he said that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints. I read that same verse in the New Living Translation. 
and I was extremely excited. He said, I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light. <laughs> I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light. I pray that your heart will be flooded with light. Why is he praying for a flood of light? He says, so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called his holy people. Who are, the, who are his rich? Who are his rich and glorious inheritance? By the mercy of the living God, everything blocking your minds, not allowing you to turn to the Lord, not allowing you to receive the light. There is a flood of light coming tonight. It's not an ordinary light. That light will flood your heart. That light will illuminate your heart. That light will take over your heart. In the name of Jesus, if you believe it, so you better, amen. amen. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, when you read in verse 2, the Bible says that the God of this world is the one that enters into the children of disobedience and does not allow them to obey God. There is a God of the world that takes over the hearts of men. But as the light of God comes, darkness can't comprehend it. That God of this world is jumping out of your heart. That God of this world is jumping out of your mind. He's jumping out of your lives. In the name of Jesus. I said to somebody that when we say let there be light, it's a heart thing. It's the thing of your heart. If your heart is not receiving the light, then your hands cannot receive the blessing. If it is not in your heart, it cannot be in your hand. And so if we want the hand of God to take over our hands, to take over our lives, and for us to receive blessings, then it must start from the heart. And I'm believing God with somebody tonight that whatsoever has held your heart bound is letting you go. I remember the story of the prodigal son. When you read in John chapter 15, between verse 11 and verse 24, this prodigal son had wasted his father's inheritance on riotous living. He had squandered the money and he got to a point where he was helpless and he couldn't find help anywhere. And he went to man and he wanted to take food that was meant for pigs. But the owner of the pigs wouldn't even allow him. And at that point, something happened to his mind. He came to his senses. The Bible says he came to his senses. And he said, even in my father's house, servants don't eat this. I will go back to my father. I will say, I'm not worthy to be called a child. I say, I'm not worthy to be called a son. Make me one of your servants. Do you know that the solution of that man's life came the day his mind changed? There are many that are out there that are doing terrible things not because they are in their right mind, they are out of their mind. Everyone that is out of his mind and is committing sin and is blocking light, I pray tonight, the flood of the light of God, illuminate your heart. Your mind is returning. Your senses are returning. You are coming back home. You are coming back to your father. You are coming back to your savior. You are coming back to the light of the world. If, they are talk, if God is talking to you, say better amen. Another example I'd like to give is the story of the madman of Gadara. The madman of Gadara. Bible says in Mark chapter 5, when you read between verse 1 and 20, that this man was so mad <laughs> that madmen respected him for his madness. His level of madness was such that they couldn't even chain him. They couldn't put clothes on him. They couldn't tie him down. But one day, Jesus crossed many waters. Jesus overcame many storms just because one man must be delivered. And the Bible said the moment Jesus stepped out of the boat and came into the place where the madman was, the madman saw Jesus afar off and he bowed and worshipped him. Do you know that in every insanity, there are split seconds of sanity. And in that split second of sanity, this madman took advantage. He worshipped the Lord. The next moment, voices started speaking inside of him. Have you come to torment us before our time? We know who you are. 
Jesus said to the devils, you are too late. He has worshipped me already. He has changed his mind. He is mine already. The light has come. You know what the light did? The demons that have been terrified the man, the light gave them command. He commanded the darkness. He commanded the devils, get out of him. And they went into 2,000 pigs that were by the water. And the pigs ran into the water. Whatsoever has chained you down, whatsoever has tied you down, whatsoever has held you captive, as you change your mind today, as you come back to your senses and you allow the light of God to shine upon you, I pray that tonight is your night of deliverance. Tonight is your night of victory. Tonight is your night of glory. If you believe it, rise up on your feet and say, let there be light. I want you to remain standing. Somebody said there is a level of insanity in everybody. And I said, I'm not among them. He said, the only difference is some insanities are still wearing clothes. Some problems are still wearing tie. Some problems are still covered under garments. But do you know something, beloved? <laughs> the moment light came on the stage... Whatsoever was eating under garments, they were shaking out. I want you to know that before the word will be able to penetrate you tonight, there must be a flooding of the light that it will illuminate your heart. That suddenly you will come back to your senses. You will say, ah, how come I am doing this? Do you know someone said to me, the day a madman realizes he's mad is the end of his sanity. The day you realize that you are wrong, the day you realize that you need help, is the first step to your solution. I want you to lift up your voice and say, Father, flood my heart with your light tonight. In the name of Jesus, every veil of my heart must be taken away. Every covering of my mind must be taken away. Everything that is not allowing me to change my mind, to receive the light of God, they must be taken away. In the name of Jesus, flood my heart with your light. 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 Heart with your light. Let my heart be flooded with the light of God. Let my heart be flooded with the light of God. I receive light. I receive light. I receive light. I receive light tonight. Illuminate my heart with light. Illuminate my heart with light. Lepa yekata. Orapopo yekata. Limo sunta yekete. Thank you, blessed Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And finally, before I leave this stage, in the book of Mark, in chapter 10, between verse 46 and verse 52, the Bible said there was one man whose identity was known by his problem, blind Bartimaeus. I don't know who you are, and your problem has become your middle name. But the Bible tells us something, that that man heard that Jesus was passing by. The light was passing by, and he started shouting, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the Bible says, every, everyone around Jesus, the light, they told him to keep quiet. Stop shouting his name. Don't disturb him. It's not for people like you he came. But the Bible says he cried the more. He takes a person whose mind has changed. He takes a person whose mind has been turned around. Who knows that the light that has come is the only source of my help. And do you know that man? He knew that Jesus came into Jericho and that Jesus was leaving Jericho. And after that visit to Jericho, Jesus was going to the cross. And the Bible makes us to understand that man somehow perceived that this opportunity must not pass me by. I don't know whose mind has changed tonight. I don't know whose heart the light of God has flooded. And you are saying light has come to Dallas. I will not miss tonight. No, when people tell you to keep quiet, you will say, I won't keep quiet. This light will not pass me by. It will have mercy on me. And the Bible says 
that Jesus stood still and he said, bid him to come. Bid him to come. And by the time Jesus, or by the time this man came to Jesus, he said, what do you want? And the man said, that I may see. That I may see. And the Bible make us to understand <laughs> that Jesus said to him, your faith had made you whole. That is, before you arrived here, there had been a change of heart. You already had believed. I don't know how many of you believe already that this night is your night. If you believe it, you will pray this last prayer before I leave this stage. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me tonight. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Have mercy on me tonight. He will remember you. Have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. Have mercy on me tonight. 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 Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy on me tonight. Have mercy on me tonight. Have mercy on me tonight. Have mercy. Thank you, blessed Father. Thank you, King of glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I declare over you and over the entire city of Dallas, this is the night to obtain mercy. Mercy will locate you. Because there's a change of heart already. The light of God will illuminate your life. The blessings that come from the hand of God will touch you. Thank you, blessed Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. If you're clapping, put those hands together for Jesus. Put those hands together for Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. Tell your neighbor while you sit, my light will shine. I don't know what city you're from. For most of us here, we're from Dallas. If you're not from Dallas, put your city and tell your neighbor, Dallas will see my light. If you're from Los Angeles, you're from New York, you're from wherever city, say, my city will see my light. If you believe it, shout a loud amen. amen. Now it is going to be offering time. Please put your hands together while I invite Pastor Bayo at the Wale. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Is somebody excited here tonight? I can't see your excitement because it's offering time. And Daddy Tozo taught us yesterday that when it's time for... Can we just be... Calm down, calm down. Tell your neighbor, calm down, calm down. We are about to do something very, very important. Because why God loves a cheerful giver. So if you're excited to give tonight, can I hear your hallelujah tonight? Praise the name of the Lord. Dallas, can I hear your voice tonight? Hallelujah. Just a simple reminder is something that we know. Why do we give? We give because you love somebody or you love, you just want to. You give because there's a reason, there's a motive. We also give in the context of the church because we are not only giving because we love our God, we want to honor God. It's also an expression of our worship, our service tonight. We give because we want to honor and to appreciate the faithfulness, the goodness of God. The one who keeps us alive every minute. Can somebody say amen to that? And tonight I want to invite every one of us. At those online place is part of our worship tonight. It's an expression of our love to God. But say, for John, so we use John 3, 16 for salvation of soul. But it's more than that. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever... We believe in it, we will not perish. Tonight, we also want to show God that we love God. And we want to give our best to him because he gave us our best. Does that make sense? I can't hear your voice again. Can, does that make sense? 
Can we package our offering tonight and let's give something worthy to our God. Let's give something that we honor God. Let's say God in, with our offering tonight, something that will express our love to God. And there are many ways to give. You will see them on the screen. You can text to give. You can go online and give. You can also sell to finance as you see in North America. And you can also write a check or give cash. There are ushers who are well uniformed and they will be around you. There are envelopes also you can give. So there are many ways to give. But tonight we want to give cheerfully. We want to give because we love God. Can somebody say amen today? So can we package our offerings together wherever we are? Online, we are, it's part of our worship. So please join us as we honor our God. And Sammy's Ronke Adeshoko will be minutes. Can we put hands together as strong additional consignments come to lead us as we worship the Lord with our offerings tonight. Hallelujah! Can we stand on our feet and give the Lord some praise? I think there you Dallas. Lift your hands and give the Lord praise.
shout hallelujah can we appreciate the grace of God upon Sammy's Ronke at the Shoko tonight can we appreciate God hallelujah please if you've not been able to give wherever you are can I just hear your you are the only one to shout hallelujah if you are yet to give can I hear your hallelujah oceans there are many people that are yet to give on this side are you giving physically or you want to give digitally the various means have been displayed, so please, let's continue to. I'll give you one more minute, one more minute, and those online, please, let's be part of our expression of our worship to God tonight. One more minute. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the excitement, let the joy continue to flow. The light of God is shining through each and every one of us tonight. Hallelujah. Shall we just pray? Father, we want to thank you. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory for being our sustainer and being our keeper. Thank you, almighty God, for the power to make wealth. Thank you for this privilege and opportunity that we have to express our love back to you, God. Thank you, almighty God, that you receive us. Receive these gifts that we have brought to you, Almighty God. Have respect for them. Use them for your glory, Almighty God. In the mighty name of Jesus. And as you have said in your word, O oh God, bless every giver tonight, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. And for those who couldn't give for whatever reason, let your light, O oh God, shine in their lives, O oh God. That they will have much to give next time around. Lord, use all this for your glory. Blessed be your name, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Can we put those hands together for the Lord? Amen. How many of us are excited to be here tonight? No, 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 no. We didn't do it very well. We didn't do it well. How many of us? I excited to be here tonight. Now, to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, put those hands one more time together for Jesus. Amen. Right now, we are about to put our grooves on. We are going to dance. We are going to worship God. How many of us have our dancing shoes? Tell your neighbor, my dancing shoes are with me. So if you're ready to dance, put your hands together as we welcome Henry Soul. Somebody give the Lord a shout. Let me hear you. Raise the 
roof this evening. Come on, shit! Tell your neighbor, oh no, man. Say, oh no, man. Oh no, man means good God. Favor has come. 
Blessings has come. Mercy has come. Are you ready? Give me body. I have one more song. The title of this song is called Many Reasons. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? You're sure? Do you have many reasons to thank the Lord? Many, many, many reasons. One, two, one, two, three, three. Many, many, many reasons. Many, many, many reasons. Many, many, many reasons to thank the Lord.
Shout hallelujah. Like Daddy Gio taught us earlier on, they said only young people know how to shout hallelujah. Let all the young people in the house shout hallelujah. <laughs> Looks like we have a few young people here. But there are more young people on my left than on the right. Is that some trick going on? Okay, let the people on the right shout louder than the people on the left. <laughs> now on my left, to get the challenge. Let's get it going on my left hand side. Let's go. One, two, three. And together, let us praise the King of glory. Everybody shouting hallelujah. 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 Go ahead, take your seats. This evening promises to be exciting, wonderful, fantastic, excellent, and God will show up for every one of us. Uh, this evening, I want to introduce to some of you and present to th those of us who do not already know him. I'll be surprised the leader of our church and our mission here in the Americas, in the person of Pastor James Fadell. Let's put our hands together, put our hands together. Let's put our hands together. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Tonight, the light is going to shine in Dallas. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. There are some declarations we are going to make tonight. By the special grace of God, the light of the world has become an initiative or a movement. When my father and the Lord celebrated his 80th birthday, he said, I don't want anybody to celebrate me. All I want is 8 million souls saying yes to Jesus. The phenomenon started in Nigeria, and by the special grace of God, over 80 countries have been lit up. It is our turn. It is our turn. Tell your neighbor, say, it is Dallas' turn. It is Dallas' turn. By the special grace of God in the Americas, we started in Detroit last week. From Detroit, we went to Toronto. 
light up Toronto. Now the third time in the Americas is Dallas. Tell your neighbor, say light up Dallas. Light up Dallas. I want you to stand on your feet. I'm going to say light up Dallas. You will say no more darkness. When I say light up Texas, you say no more darkness. When I say light up America, you say no more darkness. You say no more darkness how many times? Then when I say light up America the second time, you say we reach for Christ. When I say we reach for Christ, we say we shine the light. Let me repeat myself now. For those of you who are youth like myself, you got it the first time. Hallelujah. So you are going to say no more darkness three times. Let's say no more darkness. When I say light up Dallas, you say? When I say light up Texas, you say? When I say light up America, you say? Then when I say light up America again, you say, we reach for Christ. When I say we reach for Christ, you say we light, we do what? We shine the light. And I say one more time, we shine for Christ. You say we do what? We shine the light. Praise the, Do you get it now? Light up Dallas. I, I can't even hear you. People on the set can't even hear you. Light up Dallas. Light up Texas. Light up America. Light up America. We reach for Christ. We reach for Christ. You are smart. You are smart people. Now, wait, 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 wait. This is the first time my mother and the Lord is in America. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to show her that we are on fire in America. Hallelujah. We are going to say it one more time. You remember you are making a declaration. Amen. He says the light shineth in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. You have been made a king and a priest. When the king give an order, it must be obeyed. So when I say light up Dallas, you say what? Mommy can't even hear you. Light up Dallas! Light up Texas! Light up America! Light up America! We reach for Christ! We reach for Christ! Shout hallelujah! Amen. My assignment tonight is very simple. We are going to pray for our country. And all we are going to ask God for is mercy. 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 Psalm 51 verse 1. Psalm 51 verse 1. Say, have mercy upon me, O God. According to your loving kindness. According to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blood out my transgressions. America have sinned. We say no more abortion. You cannot kill babies. Yes, we are producing the babies, but when the babies come, we gun them down. What an irony. You are, you just, you are in Texas, in Valdi, six year old, nine year old, ten year old, and we in government, we don't have the common sense to say no more guns, but enough is enough. The blood of the children that are dead are crying vengeance until we cry for mercy. Raise up your tongue and say, my father, my father, have mercy on me. Have mercy on my family. Have mercy on my church. Have mercy on my city. Have mercy on my state. Have mercy on America. Cry to God. Cry to God tonight. Lord, we ask for mercy. Lord, we ask for mercy. Lord, we pray for mercy. Before we self-destruct, have mercy, O oh God. Visit America with your mercy. Lord, visit America with your mercy. Mercy, 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 mercy. 
Oh God, let lives no longer be wasted. My Father, my Father, have mercy, 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 have mercy. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Why are we angry with one another? Why are we killing each other? God is in heaven folding his hand. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, he says, if my people, how many people of God are here? If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, God says, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and heal their land. Raise up your two hands. Say, my father, my father, heal America. Heal America. Shine your face on America. We need you. We need you now. We need you now. Our times are in your hands, oh God. We need your mercy. We need your mercy. We need your mercy. The blood of the children we have killed are asking for vengeance. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus speak mercy. Let the blood of Jesus speak mercy. Let the blood of Jesus speak mercy. Let the blood of Jesus is mercy. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We honor your name. We praise your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. My time is up. Hold your hands together. Join up, bind us together, Lord. Bind us together with love that cannot be broken. Praise. It doesn't matter whether you're a Democrat, whether you're a Republican, whether you have no party. We must, Lord must bind us together with love. No more hatred. No more killing one another. No more AK-47. Amen. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together in love. Blessing it. Bind us. That cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together. Raise up that hand that you are holding and say, my father, my father. Bind us together. No more killing. Have mercy on America. We bow before you. We confess our sins. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy, have mercy. In Jesus' powerful name, we have prayed. You may be seated. God bless you in the name of Jesus. I'm bringing my mother in the Lord, apostle of compassion. An apostle of what? From all over the world. There's no need for me to introduce your mother to you. Can you all stand up as we welcome my mother in the Lord? As she come to pray for her children in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I say stand up and give a loud ovation to the almighty God. Amen. Kindly be seated before we start praying. I want to seize this opportunity to say thank you to the almighty God who has kept RCCG for 30 years in America. I can only hear four people clapping. Amen. If the Lord has not built his church, None of us will be here in the name of our CCG. That you are here today is the faithfulness of the Almighty God. 
rise up, shout, clap to the Lord of the church. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you glory, Lord, as we worship you. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. Amen. Kindly be seated. I'm asked to greet you as well as pray for you. I've now started greeting. I'm just thanking the Lord, the one in whom all blessings flow, the one that has allowed us to be here in the name of, in this name and in the name of RCCG. And I want to say congratulations to the gentleman, the gentleman of the altar, and his wife, who allowed himself to be used of the Lord 30 years ago. And the church started in his house, Pastor Fadel and his wife. I want to congratulate you. The Lord that has kept you thus far will keep you to the end. And you will reign eternally with him. In Jesus' mighty name. I want to congratulate the general of us here, of RCCG. <laughs> we congratulate you, sir, that you are alive to see this day. The Lord that has kept you thus far will keep you and you will see more good days. The best is yet to come. We celebrate you, Daddy. We celebrate you. At this point in time, I want to say thank you on behalf of RCCG and myself as a mother in this mission. To all my colleagues, the pastors in the house, all the ministers of God, the choir members, the instrumentalists, technical officers, ushers, choir, all workers, and all of you, the congregation, those who are here and those who could not come, for this wonderful time we are having before him. Because 30 years is not a joke. We know what we are talking about. If you ask Pastor Fadel to start reading um, his journal for every day of the 30 years, he has, he can make five books out of it. How much more of the secretariats in Nigeria writing on how many things had happened for 30 years in America? So we have the cause. And all these things cannot happen without you. Clap for yourself. Clap for yourselves. Congratulate yourself. Congratulate your neighbor. I say, I congratulate you. You are still here for the blessings of the Almighty God. Brethren, it is not something we should overlook. Except the Lord keeps the city. Those who are awake, 
He had done some work in vain. So except the Lord builds the house, the builders are working in vain. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. If you are excited like me, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord with my mouth. Only the Holy Ghost life and the Holy Ghost fire can sustain every one of us through the blood and the love of Christ. Paul was admonishing the, 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 the people of Rome. He said, It's only God. Nobody can separate us from his love. If his love has not sustained you, where shall you and me, where shall we be? Let us begin to thank the Lord. For 30 years of his faithfulness, for the 30 years of keeping the church going with power, with grace, with favor, with mercy. Open your mouth. Let him hear your voice. We owe him a lot. If he has not done it, we cannot force him. But if he has done it, let's give him the praise. Let him know we appreciate. Thank him for 30 years. We will sing of his praises forever. With our mouth, we shall make no of his faithfulness, he has been faithful. He has been faithful. Give him praise, give him honor for the provision for all that he has groomed among us. He has produced several pastors, several evangelists, several teachers, several prophets, Oh, Jehovah is his name. He has saved so many souls. He has healed so many sick. He has brought blessings unto us. He has joined us together with ourselves as families. He has given us so many children, biological and even spiritual. Only him alone can do it. The Lord of the church. Give him praise. Give him honor. Let him hear your voice. Thank him for his mighty acts. Let him know that we appreciate him as a church. Glory be to his holy name forever. Thank you, Jehovah. In Jesus' mighty name, we have appreciated him. Brethren, after 30 years, what is your portion? I have a song I used to sing. I'm not going to sing it now because of time. I say, God is my portion forever. When God is your portion forever, 
Nobody can steal you away from him. Nobody can steal your blessing from him, from you. Brethren, Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 1. Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 1. On the 38th year, the Bible tells us that Ezekiel, as he was standing, the heaven opened unto him. He saw a vision. Make this year the beginning of years for yourself. Promotion from the Almighty God. Why do we start a new walk with him? Why no more darkness, no more sickness in your life? You are now going to say, Father, tonight, let your heaven open unto me too and begin to tell him what you want from him. It's light for you. Begin to tell him, let my heaven open tonight. Let my heaven open. Lord, <laughs> I am thirsty. I want you to give me more than I can, I, I, I can cope with. Surprise me with your overwhelming power, strength, anointing from above, glorious work, greater works with you, the grace to walk in you to the end of the day. Let my heaven open and show me a new vision of my life. I want a new beginning indeed. Ah, Jehovah, if it is 30 years for RCCG, and what has been my contribution? What have I been able to do? How many sick people have been healed through me? Oh, Lord Almighty, how many souls have been, have been saved through me? Let this year begin a, be a beginning of a new, a new year in my life why my life will be totally useful for you and that my days shall be fulfilled. Lord, let this year be a beginning of years for me, of glorious year, closer work, mighty works for you, blessings of you, almighty God, that you had no sorrow to it, sickness free, oh, full of anointing and power, Oh, we bless you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You have prayed for yourself. If God has not groomed our CCG till now, and he has not been by our side, you won't be here, I won't be here. You are not going to tell him. In this 30th year, let the heaven open unto our CCG. We, are, we have not been able to reach, set our feet on it, and perform your wonders. Raise up many, many, many people, prophets, teachers, all those who will continue to proclaim the work. Shall we begin to pray? You made heaven to open unto Ezekiel on the 30th year. This is your church, full of many, many people. Not only one Ezekiel. We are more than one here. Father, we pray for RCCG worldwide. That the heavens will open unto RCCG. Jehovah Rapha, Mikale Kingi Miko, Sekale Yeye Kuri Mika. And this light, this light will shine through RCCG all over the world. And you will raise up many, many people who will serve in the vineyard as evangelists, pastors, prophets, teachers. Oh, Kira Moko Shira Moya Makuri Keye. This is our request. So shall it be. Thank you, Jehovah. Thanks, thanks. 
We give you thanks for all you had done for us. We've been so blessed, our souls are fun dressed. Oh Lord, we give you thanks. Oh Lord, we give you our Father and our God, the Lord of Lords, the God of heaven in whom every blessing flow. The Lord of the church, we salute your majesty. We give you praise. With all the tribulations and all the problems the church has been facing all over the world, most especially in America, you still kept the church standing because you are behind your church and you are the builder of your church. We are saying, Daddy, the Lord of the church, we are saying a big thank you tonight. We are so grateful that you did not allow the church to die. The fire is just getting hotter and hotter every day. We bless you, O oh Lord. Accept our thanks and praises in Jesus' name. Father, more than anything, as we are celebrating the 30th year, individuals here and those who could not come will receive for everyone a new beginning of open heavens that nobody can shut in the mighty name of Jesus. That all redeemers in America and all over the world today, they will receive open heavens, new visions, that their lives will receive a drastic change, that nobody will be able to draw back again in peace, in perfect health, in prosperity in mercy, in fruitfulness, in greater works, we receive from you in the mighty name of Jesus. As for the vision as we have shown Ezekiel, we pray that none of our vision will grow dim. The grace to fulfill all our missions in life you will give to us. As for RCCG, you are the Lord of the church. Continue to build your church. Continue to build your church. Everyone you have used thus far, Jehovah strengthen everyone, anoint everyone, give us closer work with you in the mighty name of Jesus so that greater works can be done. Don't let any spirit of weariness or tiredness come upon us. Help us to wait on to you till the end of the day. And at the end of the day, when you shall be there, calling the saints home, don't let any of us be found once in. Help us to reign with you eternally. And let the church of God triumphant forever. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We're putting our hands together for God. Amen. Say it louder, amen. amen. So, right up next, we have a guest in the house. Are we shouting? Okay. 
Shall we rise on our feet? Please rise on your feet wherever you're standing, wherever you're seated, please rise on your feet as we welcome the ministry of Travis Green. Amen. I know we are waiting, but even as we wait, Isaiah 60 verse 1 says, Arise and shine, for your light has come. Tonight is a very pregnant night. Something is going to be born in your life. That long-awaited dream, that expectation. God might have been showing you things for your city. He might have been showing you things for your life. But all these years you've been waiting. You've been waiting. Like Hannah, you've been waiting. On this very day, as our Father proclaims a blessing on us, your light will shine. Your city will hear your voice. Your generation will hear your voice. People who have been laughing at you, they will laugh with you. From today, your testimony will be great. If you are excited for that, put your hands together one more time for Jesus. Travis Green, please. He wants me to sing without a microphone. Light up, Dallas. Pastor Adebayo. Hey, hey, hey. To all my family and friends. I'm excited to be here tonight. We are going to worship our God because he's worthy of it. Any grateful people in the room, shout! You 
sing it. He made. Come on. Walk oh, out. I need you to touch three people and tell them I'm about to give God my best praise. I'm about to give him my best praise. Put your lights up in the air. 
Get your cell phones out. Put your lights up in the air. And wave them side to side. Let's go. Wave them side to side. Let's go. I can see the light coming. I can see the light coming. I can see the I need some young people to get out of your city. Jump. Come on. It's not happening to me, it's happening for me. We about to turn up, y'all. He's intentional, hands up! Yep. I know that all things are working for my good. Cause he's intentional, I hear you. He's never failing. I know that all things are working for my Cause she's in. Can we do it like we in Legos tonight? Come on. Sing all things. All things are working for my good. Cause she's intentional. He's intentional. Hey. He's never failing. Never season I hear you I hear you I hear you never tell your neighbor oh, all things are working for my good he didn't teach you know Singing, they're not singing. Let's try this out over here. I don't have to worry, it's working for me. It's working for me. It's working for me. In the middle, let me hear you right here. Y'all sing, y'all sing.
very curve. It's working for me. It's working for me. I believe it's working. How do you know that, Travis? Because he's intentional. He's intentional. He's intentional. And he's never failing. Give your intentional God an intentional point. I'm loving this. Can I come back next year? To G.O., Dad, and to all the leaders here, thank you guys for allowing us to come and be a part of this big, amazing conference. I told my friends in the back, I feel like I'm in Nigeria a little bit. I couldn't believe when I got the car they didn't give me any jollof rice. I don't know what's going on. I thought... Can I do it like I do at the experience? One, two, one, two, three, jump. All right. I need your help with this, all right? Tell your neighbor, give me a little room, 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 give me a little room. We're going to rock it out from side to the side. All right? Like this. Now you're going to say this, say this, say this, say this. I don't have to worry because it's working for me. It's working for me. Yeah, it's working. Can I hear you? Can I hear you? I don't have to worry. I don't have to worry because it's working for me. Working for me. It's working for me. It's working for me. It's working for me. Bring it down, bring it down, bring it down, bring it down. What's up? Now, they got this rumor. That women sing louder than men in church. We're going to try it out. I need all the fellas, all the fellas. I don't have to. Fellas, sing. Okay. I hear you. Sing, I don't have to. You say. Everything is 
One more time, real loud. I don't have to worry. No, 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 no. Yeah. Working for me. So hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. You have won. And death could not hold you. Hands lifted high. We give you all the. We were. Come on, from our spirits. The spiritual transaction. We must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Come on, everybody all over this room, tell them now. We.
That's why we've come. We were. Done so much for me, I cannot tell it all. Not right, And if I had 10,000 tongues, still wouldn't be enough. Shuku na guama really. When you heal, you heal completely. Nah. Shuku maro be more. You see, he can't be late. Nah. Hands lifted. What shall I render? I just feel like since we're at Light Up Dallas, we're supposed to have a praise party. So I hope I don't get in trouble. But if some praises want to meet me up front, we're going to jump around just a little bit and give God a praise. We're going to jump around just a little bit and give God some praise. Can they come down? Are they allowed to come down? They say you can come down. Come down if you want to come down, if you want to come down. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, let them come, let them come. Let the young people come. Let's light it up, Dallas. Let them come, let them come. Let them come, let them come, let them come, let them come.
Do me a favor, fist pump to somebody and tell them, my God will never ever let you go. Never let me go. More stems on the floor. Never let me go. Never let me go. Sing it together. You fill me up with strength for the journey. Woo. Always enough when I am lonely or dead. Yeah, yeah. Everything I need, love all around me. Look at God. You'll never leave me alone. When I'm ready to give up, Lord, you won't let me go. Holding, when I'm ready to give up, Lord, you won't. For you keep. Come on. Stood at the end. Right where I was. Come on, tell them. You've been my friend. I can count on you, you're
serve a big God with a big hand. And he'll never ever let us go. So we think you won't let me go. You got me. Hey, I know there's safety in your arms. You won't let me go. Hey. You won't let me go. You got me. Come on. It's amazing grace. This amazing grace. This amazing grace. You show so you show. Called out my name, knew my past covered my sin. This amazing grace you show. came out of your way. You sat down to speak to me. I was the woman at the well. This amazing
wait, 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 wait. It's 300 people singing different words. Let's get it right. Somebody said, if you let me go. Somebody said, if you let me die. It's, it's none of that. If you left me, God. If you left me. Everybody, like, I've been singing it wrong for five years. You waited. Where would I be if you left me? We're on the same page? All right. Let's try it. Where would I be if you left me? I don't want to know. Where would I be? standing here only because you may we're standing here not knowing how we'll get through the test but holding on to faith you know best cause nothing can catch you by surprise you got it figured out, and you're watching us. And when it looks as if we can't win, you wrap us in. And everything we need, we supply. You got it in control. And now, Rose. You. You made a way When our backs were against the wall And it looked as if it was over You, you made a way Yeah, and we're standing here Only because you made a way You made a way When our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over Lord you made a way and was standing here only because you made a way we gotta go but right before we do everybody think that you move mountains you count wild Sing it. 
come back. Thank God so much. God bless you. We'll see you soon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's put those hands together. Put your hands together for the Lord. While, while all these people go, let's put it together like this. Keep it going. Don't get tired. Don't get tired. Let somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> See, only the older folk are up there can shout hallelujah. Let everybody in this house tonight shout hallelujah. <laughs> Let's raise the roof in this house tonight as we give worship and praise to the almighty God. Let's lift up our voices together and shout hallelujah. If you have been listening to what Daddy Joe has been telling us, you will know that nothing can be better than to be obedient. At the count of three, let everyone who is inside here shout a God-raising hallelujah. One, two, three. Three. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. When do you want Travis Green to come back? Tomorrow? Next year? Year after the next? Three years from now? Shout hallelujah. It's getting better. It's getting better. It's getting better. Give it up. Give it up for the Lord. Give it up to the Lord. Give it up to Private Green. Shout hallelujah. The best tell your neighbor. Say neighbor, 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 neighbor. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Buckle up your belt. My father in the Lord, the general overseer of the redeemed Christian church of God, He's bringing in the world. Shout hallelujah. And before he comes tonight, the best saxophonist in the world and his son, uh, Bayo, Ade Bayo, his son, and Kunle Ajayi, the best saxophonist in the world, they are going to bring down the presence of the Lord. After that, my father and the Lord is going to bring the world. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, 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 neighbor. Buckle up your belt. Light up Dallas. No more darkness. Light up Dallas. Light up Texas. Light up America. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Pastor Kunle Ajay.
say, let's lift our hands to the most high God and begin to bless his holy name. Let's begin to give him glory and pardon and adoration, praise him. Praise the King of Kings, praise the Lord of Lords. Praise the Ancient of Days, magnify his holy name. He's worthy to be praised. Thank you, Father. We bless your holy name. Thank you, thank you, thank you. May your name be glorified, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Please, Lord, we worship you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. When you lift your voice to the almighty God, loud and clear, and say, Father, please bless many people here tonight. Starting with me. Open your mouth and cry to the almighty God. Please bless many people here tonight. But please start with me. Start with me. Bless many people here tonight. But start with me. Start with me, Lord. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your name. Amen. I have a Father, Almighty Father, He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I have a Hallelujah, I have a Father, Hallelujah, Almighty Father, He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords, I have a Father, Hallelujah, I have a Father, Hallelujah. Almighty Father, he is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I have a Father. Almighty God, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the Lord of Hosts, the King of Glory, the one who has never lost a war, the Holy One of Israel, Lion of the tribe of Judah, Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Glory be to your holy name. Tonight, in your own miraculous way, visit every one of us. In the life of everyone here present, Lord, do something new. In the life of one hearing us, Lord God Almighty, please do something new. At the end of it all, let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let someone shout hallelujah. Well, I shake hands with two or three people and say, God bless you tonight. I wasn't planning to sit down, but since they provided a seat, Glory be to God.
want you to know that before I came here tonight, I asked God for at least 300 healings. And I asked him to add as many miracles as he wants. And don't wait till the end. Within the next five minutes, the power of God will already be at work. Who will be the first to receive a miracle? Let me hear you shout hallelujah. Tonight we want to talk about the hand of the Lord. The hand of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 1. Isaiah 59 verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Neither is ear heavy that it cannot hear. When you talk about how great a man is, the greatness can be in terms of wealth, education. Influence, power, it can be in terms of strength. Whichever angle you look at it, my God is the greatest. He's greater than the greatest. He's wiser than the wisest. Is stronger than the strongest. We want to look at the hand of the Lord from the perspective of power. How powerful is the hand of God? You start by looking at what his finger can do. If he points his finger at you, it means he has singled you out for a miracle. In John chapter 5, from verse 2 to 9, John 5, from verse 2 to 9. The Bible tells us about a pool called Bethesda. And the Bible says there was a multitude there. A multitude means a crowd probably bigger than this. And all manners of people were there. The sick, the lame, the incurable, they were there. Because an angel will come down once a year, trouble the pool, and the first fellow to get in after the angel has gone out of the water will get healed. So people that the doctors have already condemned to death were there. One day Jesus Christ came walking among that multitude looking for just one person. And the Holy Spirit guided him. Is it this one? No. That one? No. That one? No. This one. 
And the Bible says the one who had been there for 38 years, God pointed him out. That day, he got his miracle. That day, he left the society of the sick. That day, he left the society of the stagnant. That day, his failure ended. And you know what? He never returned there. God is going to point at someone tonight. When he points at you, you get a miracle. <laughs> I've told you this story before. I, I will try and be as brief as I can because I believe God wants to do a quick work. We were having a program at the camp. It was finished. We were praying the last prayer. So I said everybody should pray, ask God for something they want. And because of the way I was trained as a small boy, I closed my eyes when I was praying. Suddenly, God spoke to me and said, son, open your eyes. And I opened my eyes. And deep down in the crowd, he pointed at a woman who was weeping profusely and told me, go and tell her, stop weeping. May I decree tonight that there is someone here you will never weep again. I went to her. She was deep in sorrow. And I told her, God said, stop weeping. And suddenly, face frightened up because she realized at long last God has located me. A year later when there was a group of people lined up to see me, there was this woman standing in front of me. Yes ma'am, how can I help you? She opened her mouth the only word that could come out was Jesus. I said, yes. Yes, what is it Jesus did for you? She opened her mouth again and said, Jesus. By the time she had said Jesus about three times, I was getting a bit impatient because there was a long line. She said, there was a woman who was weeping. I've been barren for donkey years. My in-laws have told me that if I don't produce a child, very soon they will drive me out of my matrimonial home. Then God sent you to tell me, stop weeping. Now I looked at her. And it was my turn to weep for joy. Because on the right hand, she was carrying a baby. On the left hand, she was carrying a baby. I believe God is asking me to tell somebody here tonight, your weeping days are over. So when God points at you, it means he singles you out for 
What happens when he touches you? Not just pointing now, but a powerful hand. Just one finger touches you. In Matthew chapter 8, from verse 1 to 3, Matthew chapter 8, from verse 1 to 3, if you like, you can read it to verse 4. A leper came unto him. There was a multitude there. See, when God wants to do something marvelous, usually he does it for just one fellow in a crowd. A leper, at least in those days, was someone who cannot be cured. Leprosy was incurable. The leper, because of leprosy, is not allowed to be among people. It's supposed to go and live alone. It's not supposed to gather together with people. When a leper comes to a gathering, the people will stone him so that he will not contaminate the rest. But this leper was desperate. She was already half dead. So if you want to stone me, stone me. I would die anyway. But she came to I mean, he came to Jesus and said, I know you have enough power to make me clean. Whether you be willing or not, that's what I don't know. The Bible said, Jesus touched him and said, I will be cleansed. And immediately, he was cleansed. In that name that's above every other name, God will touch somebody tonight. Years ago, we were having in Nigeria what we call Goa fishing, where we go from town to town fishing for souls. And I was in a town called Safele. I was ministering. And all of a sudden, God opened my eyes and I saw a vision. I saw a young boy born blind. And as I saw the boy born blind, I didn't wait for the vision to complete because in that vision, the boy's eyes were opened. So I got excited and I announced, ah, there's a blind boy here. Bring him forward. God wants to heal him. Nobody moved. I know what I saw. Oh, maybe it's at home and you are the parent. Please go home quickly. God wants to open his eyes. Nobody moved. Huh? God has never deceived me before. Is that a man that is to lie? Okay, after the service, I will wait outside. Go home, bring the boy, and God will open his eyes. I waited for almost two hours. Nobody came. And I was, I have another appointment for Akure. So reluctantly, very sad, I left Safele. I thought I had lost a miracle. Then I go to Akure because they have waited for me long enough. Somebody else was preaching. So I just sat down at the back of the crowd. And all of a sudden, an elderly man stood up while the service was on, the preacher was preaching. And in his hand was a young boy. And it was the boy I saw in the vision. 
and the elderly man was leading the boy to the stage. God must have spared him to say, I, I want to do something for your boy. And of course, as he began to come towards the preacher, the security people were moving forward to stop him. And there was a crowd there. So I began to run from the back to say, please, don't, don't push him away. I don't want him to be lost in the crowd. So I began to run. The boy had my two steps and turned. And as he turned, his eyes opened. Nobody prayed for him. No human hand touched him. But God touched him. In the name that's above every other name, God will touch somebody tonight. If you are the one, your amen will be louder. Then what happens if he now lays his hand on you? Because if he points at you, you are singled out for a miracle. If he touches you, the incredible happens. What happens if he lays the whole hand on you? In First Kings chapter eighteen, First Kings chapter eighteen. Mm, thank you, Father. The Lord asked me to tell a woman. He said the doctor said that your womb has been damaged before beyond the repair. He asked me to tell you he has given you a new womb. In First Kings chapter eighteen, verse forty-six, the Bible says the hand of God was on Elijah. And he outran the chariot of the king. A man and the chariot of the king, the chariot of the king will be drawn by the best horses in the land. He ran a race of more than six miles. And the man won. Because the hand of God was upon him. When God's hand is upon you, you get incredible strength. When His hand is upon you, you outrun your enemy. When the hand of God is upon you, incredible miracles happen in your life. In 2 Kings chapter 3, from verse 11 to 26. 2 Kings chapter 3, from verse 11 to 26. The Bible says, some kings came to see Elisha. They wanted information about what to do because they were in, in a crisis. One of them happened to be an idol worshiper. So Elisha was angry. And he said, you want to get information? Why don't you go to your idol? In the process, the Holy Spirit withdrew from Elisha. Then Elisha said, bring me a minstrel. The Bible said that the minstrel was playing. Thank God for music. 
Music can attract angels. It can attract demons, depending on which music. And it can attract God himself. That's why I don't travel I, except I take my missile along with me. The Bible says that the ministry must play in the hand of God came from Elisha and began to prophesy. You may not believe it, but there is someone here tonight because the hand of God is going to be upon you. The gift of prophecy is going to be deposited in you. That was a man. I think there was a curse placed on him or something. So that whatever he touched got destroyed. He had a business dealing with wood. And he had machines. But even nobody can understand all the machines broke down. And he had to start borrowing money from friends to survive. He borrowed so much money from friends that the friends were not even asking him to repay. They just didn't want him to come and borrow more. So when the friends saw him coming, they left. I mean, they, they, they disappeared. Things got so bad that the children would be crying for food and there was no food to give them. The wife the mother of those children, as you see, couldn't take the stress anymore. So he, he went mental. And the husband had no money to take her to the hospital, so he took her to a herbalist. Then we had a program in a particular town. We finished, and we were on our way. And he came and blocked my way. He said, uh, you can't go. We prayed. We pray. He said, no, 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 no. Hear my story. I had the story. And the Spirit of God inspired me to say, stretch forth your hands. And he set forth his hands. And I lay my hands on his hands. And I prayed a simple prayer. The prayer I pray for him, I'm praying for you now. From now on, whatever you touch will prosper. So I told him to go and lay his hands on the machine and then lay the hand on the wire. He got home hands on the machine and every one of them started walking. So he said, ah, this thing is working. He ran to where the wife was and laid his hands on her. And all of a sudden the wife said, ah, what am I doing here? Because the mass madness disappeared. I'm going to ask you to lift your hands to the most high God. As I decree now, may God himself touch your hands. When God, God bless you, you can be seated. <laughs> Don't worry, I will soon finish. I told you God is going to do a quick work. When God points at you, he's singling you out for a miracle. When he touches you, 
irreversible, irreversible. When he lays his hand on you, oh, things change. But suppose he wraps that hand around you. Suppose he gives you an embrace. And then from that moment onward, anything that touches you touches fire. Because in Judges chapter 15, thank you, Lord. The Lord said the fellow that he's talking to now will understand. He asked me to tell you the yoke is destroyed. He says, there's someone there tonight. Uh, probably listen to me wherever you are. He said, you will begin to infect people with joy. In Judges chapter 15, from verse 14 to 15, Judges 15, 14 to 15, the Bible tells us that when they brought Samson bound to the Philistines, the Spirit of God came down mightily on him. The, the Spirit of God embraced him. The first thing that happened was that the ropes binding him became bound. The Bible says, as of fire. You see, our God is called the consuming fire. When he wraps himself around you, anything that touches you touches fire. Anything that touches you begins to carry power. Because when the, the, the Holy Spirit wrapped himself around Samson and he picked the jawbone of an ass, an ordinary jawbone of an ass, became a weapon of mass destruction. With that jawbone of an ass, he slaughtered a thousand Philistines. I'm praying for someone here tonight that the hand of the Almighty God will embrace you. Yeah. Years ago, I went to preach in one of our universities in Nigeria. Just as I was about to begin to minister, the rain came. And the rain was heavy. And we were in the open. I expected that the students would just scatter. Then they waited. I stood in the rain. I was preaching in the rain. Not a single one of them moved. I didn't know they had had a plan before I came. Well, I finished preaching, gave the altar call. In the process, the rain stopped. They allowed me to finish and allowed me to leave. Then the chair I was sitting on before I went to preach, they went and took the chair and broke it to pieces. Please don't do that to this one. 
so that each one could get a little bit. Because they felt the anointing that had been deposited in the chair. Just a little bit of it will be enough. And the testimony that I had, the first testimony I had of all others, several of them, was that there was this one of the students. His sister had been mad for more than 16 years. He went to, with that little bit of wood of the chair, touched the sister. And instantly, she came out of the madness. She said, Ah, I've had a very long, bad dream. They said, oh, yes. They didn't tell her she had been mad. I'm praying for someone here today. Because you came. The very dress you are wearing now will carry power. When he points out to you, he sets you apart for a miracle. When he touches you, the irreversible becomes reversed. When he lays his hands on you, the incredible begins to happen. When he wraps his hand around you, everything you touch will begin to carry power. They see something better. What if he carries you? In Mark chapter 10, from verse 13 to 16, I know God wants to do something special for someone. He just asked me to tell you, I will see you through. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Daddy. Allow me to say amen to this before I tell you. <laughs> Daddy says many run, but few win. He asked me to tell someone, you will not only win, but you will win easily. In Mark chapter 10, from verse 13 to 16, Mark 10, 13 to 16, the Bible tells us that they brought some children to him, the parents of some children brought some children to him that he might pray for them. And the disciples said, no, don't disturb the master. Take your children away. But he said, ah, no. Let the children come unto me. Don't forbid them. He said, because of their, it's of them that the kingdom of God exists. And then he carried them in his hands and blessed them. Mm -hmm. You know, when he carried them, Suddenly, those children became higher than those who were asking them not to come close. When God carries someone, 
it become far, far higher than those who are trying to stop his progress. So if anybody tries to stand in your way from tonight onward, you will soon be higher than they. A word of prophecy came at redemption camp not too long ago. And I'm believing God that he will allow me to claim it for you. And what he said was that there was someone in the crowd. He said, those who used to look at you behind, we now begin to look at you in front. You see, when God carries you, you achieve more in less time. Acts chapter 8, from verse 26 to 40. Acts chapter 8, from verse 26 to 40. The Bible tells us the story of a young man called Philip. Very successful deacon in Samaria. And then God told him to go to the desert, to go and meet somebody there. He went, he met the man, got the man converted, and uh, the man said, since God has singled me out for a miracle, why can't I be baptized? And uh, Philip said, why not? He went into the water, he baptized him, and, and the, he saw Philip no more by the time he was coming out of the waters. Because the Bible said the spirit had carried away Philip. God gave him supernatural transportation. I have good news for someone because of tonight. Your promotion will begin to dazzle people. I can give you several examples, but I want to close quickly so that God can do what He still wants to do. We started a university 17 years ago. And then this year, the government of Nigeria decided to grade the various universities in order of superiority. And for your information, there are more than 100 universities in Nigeria now. When the result came out, our university that started 17 years ago was beaten only by the University of Ibada. The University of Ibada was started in 1948. There are other big, big names that you know. University of Lagos, University of Upper Mawolo, University, University of Nigeria, started more than 60 years ago. How could that be? That a university that's not 20 years old beat all the others? Spiritual transportation. When I was doing my PhD in mathematics, you probably have had this testimony before. You know, you get a PhD, people solve a problem that have never been solved before in mathematics. 
So because the problem had never been solved before, we don't even know whether it has a solution. And unless you solve a problem that had never been solved before, you don't get your PhD. You don't do uh, PhD by examination. You must do it by examination and dissertation. I've been working on a problem for 18 months. And I ended up with 186 simultaneous equations. Those of you who know anything about mathematics, you, you have problem with two simultaneous equations. I had 186. So it got to a stage where even I, I, did, I, I wasn't even sure whether to go forward or to go back. Because to go back means the work of 18 months is gone for nothing. Then one evening, I looked at the old thing. I couldn't see my right for my lesson. I will put it aside. I will continue from tomorrow. Let me just read my Bible and go to bed. And I decided on that day, I just opened my Bible and I read Exodus chapter 14. Now the children of Israel were by the Red Sea. The sea parted and so on. Suddenly, God spoke to me. He will speak to somebody tonight. I said, son, that is the solution to your problem. Solution to my problem? Yes, I was doing something on hydrodynamics. It has to do with water. Yes, how can what happened thousands of years before Jesus was born? be the solution to my problem. And the Lord said, go and bring your equations. So quickly I brought them. I sleep fled away. And he said, spread out the equations. I spread them out. And he said, put this one on the left, put this one on the right, put this one on the left, put this one on the right. <laughs> Suddenly I saw that all the equations on the left had something in common. All those on the right had something in common. But because they were mixed together, I couldn't see those things. Within five hours, the thesis I've been working on for 18 months, five hours, my thesis was ready. I said that one to say this to somebody in a way that you cannot understand. My father will carry you. Now comes the question. this one is for me. So, but I will tell you all the same. The Almighty God said there's someone here, you will soon be well known for great and frequent testimonies. You will say, what has this story got to do with light of Dallas. It is because the one whose hand we are talking about said in John chapter 9 verse 5 John 9 verse 5 he said I am the light of the world. See when we say he's pointing at you you know what they call the spotlight? When everybody is around, like a, a musician singing and so on, they point the light directly on that fellow. 
at that moment, you don't see anybody else. You are seeing one fellow spotlighted. When God is pointing at you, he is spotlighting you. And when light is traveling towards you, there's nothing darkness can do. Which brings me to the conclusion. If he points at you, he singles you out for a miracle, he touches you, he reverses the irreversible, he lays his hand on you, you are thrown your enemies, he wraps his hand around you, everything that touches you will get a miracle. He carries you. Your promotion becomes inexplicable by human standard. But there is one thing more that he could do with his hand. He can wave bye-bye. If he tries to love you and you rebuff him, if he tries to help you, you tell him to mind his own business. If he wants to befriend you and you say you don't want his friendship, he received the right to say bye bye. If he tries to embrace you or had embraced you before, and you now push him away, he reserved the right to say bye-bye. In Judges chapter 16, you can read the story from the beginning to the end. Judges 16, from the beginning to the end. There was this great man, Samson. You know the story of Samson? You can read this whole story from Judges 13. He was somebody that when a lion tried to attack him, he just tore the lion into two, like a small kid. He was a man who, when the whole city was shot against, shot against him, he was inside them, the city gate was shut. He just got there, shook the gate city free, carried it on his shoulder to a hilltop. But when God said bye-bye, he became like an ordinary man. The first thing the enemy did as soon as they got hold of him is to make sure that he would never see light again. They plugged out his eyes. You don't want God to say bye-bye to you. You don't want it. I will tell you a story and I will, I will close the sermon so we can do something else. By the way, I have not stopped to begin to tell you that the healings have been going on. We shall see very soon. Some of you, if people check your body, you know you have received healing. There was this young man by the name of Sam. He was almost an illiterate. He can only read the native mother tongue. He can't read any, any English, any English book. But he was mightily used of God. The anointing of God on this boy was almost unbelievable. I mean, they invited him to come and preach in a college. When they heard of the miracles happening to him, he said, well, when I get there, I will tell them I can't speak English, so you have to get me an interpreter. As he opened his mouth to say, I can't speak English, 
fluent English began to flow. He just saw that after about one hour, he, he didn't even know what he was saying. All he saw was that after one hour, people began to rush forward to give their life to Jesus. He raised at least three people from the dead. But then pride came. Brother Sam, let's go to Bible study. He will say, who is going to preach? Oh, it's uh, brother so and so. How many people has he raised from the dead? All manners of things. Finally, God said bye-bye to him. He ended up in the lunatic asylum. You don't want God to say bye-bye to you. And God said, in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, Revelation 3, verse 20, he said, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man hears my voice, I will come in to him. If you open the door, I will come in. I will bring my light in. But if he keeps knocking and you refuse to open the door, you reserve the right to say, okay, bye-bye. Believe it or not, God is here right now. How do you know, sir? He said so himself. He said, we are two or three. I gather together in my name. I'll be there. We are more than two or three. And when he was calling me into full-time ministry, and I was worried about how I would be able to survive, he made me only one promise. Son, I promise you this. Wherever you go, I will go with you. So, some people, who, they always think I'm joking when I say it. But whether you believe it or not, when I was coming, I brought him with me. As at this moment I'm talking to you, the headquarters of God on earth is here in Dallas. For now. So he's here. He's knocking at the door of your heart. Says, son, daughter, open the door to me. Let me come into your heart. Let me take over your life. And the only reason people because they know. They know Jesus is real. They know he can do anything. The only reason they don't want to open the door to him is because they know if he comes sin, their life will change. The Bible says this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. And children of men prefer darkness to light because their works are evil. The reason you don't want to open the door of your heart to him so he can come in is because you know if he comes in, you won't be able to cheat anymore. You won't be able to lie anymore. You won't be able to fornicate anymore because he is light. In him there's no darkness at all. But will you prefer that darkness will continue to control you? Because whoever is your master is going to dictate what you get. Or will you rather have light? The light of God will come in wash out everything that is not of God. So I'm begging those of you who are here who have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus Christ. 
I'm going to give you just three minutes to come over and stand before him so that together we can pray for your salvation. And that includes those of you who say you are born again, but there's no change in your life. Because if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You cannot be genuinely born again and not be different. It's impossible. So if you want a new beginning, if you want a new dawn for your life, and the only way you can do it is surrender your life to Jesus, I'm going to count from 1 to 10. Before I say 10, come and stand here. Let's pray together. I join my faith with yours. He saves your soul. And from now on, things will be different. He won't just point at you. He won't just touch you. He won't just lay his hand on you. He will embrace you. So if you want to come, come now. I'm counting one. Don't wait for anybody. It's a decision between you and your God. It's a decision of a lifetime. Come and come quickly. Two. Thank you. Those of you who are clapping, but you have to do it better because they are coming. They are coming. Three. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep clapping. Four. Hurry up, particularly those of you who are in the upper gallery there. Hurry up. Five. And for those of you who are clapping, your hands will never be empty. Six. The light of the world is saying, come unto me, all ye that live on a heavy lady, and I will give you rest. Come. He's calling you. Seven. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Hurry up. The Lord is still waiting. Eight. Thank you. God bless you. Hurry up. Hurry up. Nine. Yes, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. That's the final countdown now. Okay. Those of you who are still coming, keep coming. But those of you who are in front, cry to God. Tell him, I'm not joking. I want you to come into my life. I want you to take over my life completely, save my soul, and I will serve you for the rest of my life. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. And the rest of us, please, let's stretch our hands towards these wonderful people and intercede for them. That the one who saved our souls, who saved their own souls also.
pray that God will give them genuine salvation. Intercede for them. And if there's anyone still on the way, hurry up now because I need to pray. Thank you, Father. Proceed for them, brethren. Pray that the one who saved your soul will save their own souls also. Yes, God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. I'll wait a second or two for you. Thank you, Father. Yes, God bless you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so, my Father and my God, I want to thank you for your word. I want to give you all glory and for this, your people who have decided to come and surrender their life to you. You promise, Lord, that whosoever will come unto you, you will no wise cast out. They have come to you now, Lord. Please receive them. Save their souls. Let your blood wash away their sins. Today, Lord, receive them into the family of God and give them a brand new beginning. Father, I pray that any time they cry unto you from now on, you will answer them by fire. Don't let them ever backslide. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, I, I want to rejoice with those of you who have come forward. And I want to make you a solemn promise. From now on, as long as I live, I'll be praying for you. And you will soon be receiving miracles. So some miracles you have not even asked for. Then you will know there is somebody somewhere praying for you. So I'm going to need your names, your address, and your prayer requests so that I can have something to take back home with me. I can continue to pray for you. So if you look at your behind, you see a man lifting up uh, a placard with canceling written on it. Please follow him. He will take you to where some pastors are waiting. They will collect the information I want, and they bring you back very quickly. I will make sure we wait for you before we do any major thing. Let's really clap for them. Let's really clap for them. Let's really clap for them. Clap for them, clap for them. Thank you. Now, I'm going to pray a very simple prayer for you before we will do what we are still going to do. Um, so for that one, we'll wait for this boy and girls. I'm going to pray that my request for at least 300 healings and miracles be confirmed now. So get ready to receive. Ancient of days, the miracle walking God, the great physician, the God of all flesh, with whom there's nothing too difficult, have delivered your message. Father, honor your word. Every sick person here today, Father, heal. 
every captive here today, Father, set free. Everyone in need of a miracle here today, give it to them. Do it now. That your name might be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, you may think that prayer is too simple, but uh, we will do something now. And in doing that something, I'm going to beg you. The child of God, so you don't lie, right? While the musician will be playing, you check your body to discover that you have been healed, that there's something you couldn't do before that you could do now. Even as they play, you dance forward and come and stand here so that we will see whether God is true or his servant is a liar. So they will begin to play. Once you are sure you have been healed, dance forward and come and stand here. Over to you, musician. Sing a song that anybody can dance to. Not, not a joyful noise. Real one that anybody can dance to. Okay.
thank you very much. You, you will still be singing. You know, I told you, I said, you are children of God now. Children of God don't lie, right? And I said, those who have been healed should dance forward. And I've seen some people. But my request that I believe my daddy had granted is at least 300. Which means there are some people who have been healed who are not coming out. You know the implication of that? You are telling him you don't appreciate the healing and he will withdraw it. So I'm going to ask the band to sing for another two, three minutes. If he had healed you and you are not out here, by the time I ask the band to stop, don't blame me. It means you are the one who told him, I don't appreciate it. You can take your thing back. Okay, so go ahead now. If you have been healed, come out. A child of God doesn't lie. Over to you, band. <laughs> Everybody look
Why are you hiding before? You think I don't know the God I serve? I know when I ask for 300, he's going to give me more. And those of you who have been healed, let me hear you shout hallelujah. <laughs> Healing will be permanent. The devil won't be able to take it from you. All right, there are two things we must do very quickly. They, they told me that uh, the guy here gave us till midnight, but I'm sure God will lay his hand on them, and they will give us 15 minutes more. Number one, we want to say thank you to the Almighty God for what he has done. So, um, in case... You need an envelope to give him a thanksgiving offering. You raise your hand, they give you the envelope. Otherwise, you just drop it to the, uh, with the ushers when we finish. Number two, if you have your smartphone with you, you switch on the light. Because you are going to pray a prayer with the light on. The first preacher told us that when Jesus was passing by, Bartimaeus, who was blind, was crying to Jesus for mercy. Bartimaeus had many problems. He was blind. He was poor. That's why he was a beggar. He was lonely. He didn't know how many enemies he had until that day. Because when he was crying to Jesus, they told him to shut up. He wasn't even married, which means he was barren. He was sad. He was a sad man. But when finally Jesus said, go and bring him, and they brought him. And Jesus said, what do you want? He asked only one thing. Give me light. I know if you give me light, you know the Bible said the eyes are the light of the body. If you give me light, an end will come to my sickness. An end will come to my poverty. An end will come to my loneliness. An end will come to my barrenness. My sorrow will be over. Lift your light up and cry to God and say, Lord Jesus, give me light. Go ahead, pray, pray. Give me light, oh Lord. Give me light. Almighty God, give me light. Ancient of this, give me light. Give me light, Lord. Give me light now. Give me light. Almighty God, please give me light. Give me light. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now you're going to pray the second prayer with anger with every anger you can summon. You're going to say in the mighty name of Jesus, name of Jesus. From, tonight from tonight onward, darkness, darkness. Stay, away from me. stay away from me. Stay away from my family. Go ahead, cry to the almighty God in the mighty name of Jesus. From tonight onwards, darkness stay away from me stay away from my family stay away from my home stay away from my business stay away from my church from tonight onward sickness disease death poverty stay away from me Sorrow, stay away from me. 
Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, as your representative to these people, I hereby decree, in all your lives, there will be light. In your homes, there will be light. In your towns and cities, there will be light. In your state, there will be light. In America, there will be light. In all your countries, there will be light. And your light will never become darkness. Your sun will never set. Sorrow will stay away from you. Failure will stay away from you. Poverty will stay away from you. Demons will stay away from you. You will never fail again. You will never be defeated again. From this moment onward, the light of God will shine around you. And you too, you will serve God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. There's one more prayer you are going to pray finally, but in the meantime, with the light, let the devil be mad. Let's make the devil mad. All right. Now, make sure you drop your Thanksgiving offering before you go, because God will receive your offering. And you will never know poverty again. In his own miraculous way, whatever you are owing now, he will pay. Yeah. And you will keep on succeeding. Yeah. Make sure you drop your Thanksgiving offering before you go. But now, with that light still lifted high, you're going to prophesy to yourself. You will mention your name. You will say, Adeboe. You will shine forever. You will keep on shining. You'll be shining for Christ. Your light won't go dream. Go ahead. Keep on prophesying to yourself. Prophesy to yourself. Hallelujah. Let's lift up our hands and just worship the King of Glory, the one who has made us to start this program and come to this moment of this program. Let's give him glory and honor. Can we just appreciate him? The one who has made all things possible, made all grace, all blessings available. Let's worship him and give him thanks. Can we just take time to thank him tonight? Let's just appreciate the King of Glory. Father, we want to say thank you. It's been a glorious night. For a time of worship, we give you praise. For prayers that we have prayed that you have already answered, we thank you. Even for our light that has started to shine, we have come to appreciate you. To you alone be glory. To you alone be honor. To you alone be adoration. Hallelujah.
Please, we have come to the end of this program. We want to just appeal to you that you go or exit these premises gently. Just be patient. Let's give each other room to be able to go out. And I pray that the Lord who has brought you safely will take you back home safely in the name of Jesus. I pray that the Lord will grant you journey mercies in the name of Jesus. We shall see you next year. I say we shall see you next year in the name of Jesus. Can we share the grace? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. The praise, the worship continues. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.